good evening, friends. Thank you for joining us in worship here, both in the building and those of you who are joining us worshiping at home. We do pray you are blessed in your worship of Jesus with us this day. As always, everything you need to know will be projected for you behind us here on the wall. We are celebrating Holy Communion, both tonight in the building, but also we have Holy Communion available for you um, tomorrow, those of you who are worshiping at home. From 10 o'clock to 10.30. A little bit different than normal because we have one worship service tomorrow. But drive-up communion available at 10 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. tomorrow. Um, that's it for our service notes. So pray God blesses you in your worship of him. I invite you to stand now as we begin our worship this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, O Lord, I call my rock. Be not deaf to me. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy. When I cry to you for help, when I lift up my hands toward your most holy sanctuary. Well, friends, we love this time because it's a time to go before our Lord to confess our sins, those sins we know and those sins we don't know. So I invite you to join me as we do that, silently confessing all those sins to God our Father. Now together we cry out to our Lord, Father of mercy, we confess that we are not the people you created us to be. We confess that we are by nature sinners and in rebellion against your will. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by the things we have done wrong and the good we have failed to do. We have sinned against each other and broken the bonds of fellowship. Forgive us of our sins, remove the evil from our hearts and minds, and teach us to follow you with willing hearts. Now friends, through the mercy of God in Christ Jesus our Savior, you have been made the children of God and received his mercy. Therefore, as a call and ordained servant of the word, I announce God's grace to you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for our scripture readings. First reading today comes from Psalm 44. O God, we have heard with our ears, our fathers have told us, what deeds you performed in their days, in the days of old. You with your own hand drove out the nations, but them you planted. You afflicted the peoples, but them you set free. For not by their own sword did they win the land, nor did their own arm save them. But your right hand and your arm, in the light of your face, for you delighted in them. You are my king, O God, Ordain salvation for Jacob. Through you we push down our foes. Through your name we tread down those who rise up against us. For not in my bow do I trust, nor can my sword save me. But you have saved us from our foes, and have put to shame those who hate us. In God we have boasted continually, and we will give thanks to your name forever. But you have rejected us and disgraced us and have not gone out with our armies. You have made us turn back from the foe, and those who hate us have gotten spoil. You have made us like sheep for slaughter and have scattered us among the nations. You have sold your people for a trifle, demanding no high price for them. You have made us the taunt of our neighbors, the derision and scorn of those around us. You have made us a byword among the nations, a laughingstock among the peoples. All day long my disgrace is before me, and shame has covered my face at the sound of the taunter and reviler, at the sight of the enemy and of the avenger. All this has come upon us, though we have not forgotten you, and we have not been false to your covenant. Our heart has not turned back, 
nor have our steps departed from your way. Yet you have broken us in the place of jackals and covered us with the shadow of death. If we had forgotten the name of our God or spread out our hands to a foreign God, would not God discover this? For he knows the secrets of the heart. Yet for your sake we are killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. Awake, why are you sleeping, O Lord? Rouse yourself. Do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face? Why do you forget our affliction and oppression? For our soul is bowed down to the dust. Our belly clings to the ground. Rise up. Come to our help. Redeem us for the sake of your steadfast love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading today comes from Romans 8, verses 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. Now in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to enjoy our video children's message. Hi friends, thanks for being part of our children's message. You know, this is the last children's message of 2020 and, and that makes me really excited and here's why. Because every week that passes, we get one week closer to being able to do things that we haven't done as often or things that we've been separated from, right? Um, sometimes it's, it's family and, and friends, sometimes it's other events. So here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to think in your mind uh, for just a few minutes, or if, you, if you're with someone at church, talk to them and share with them some things that you're super excited about reconnecting with or doing once the, the coronavirus isn't such a big threat to us. I hope you were able to talk about, again, reconnecting with some, some friends, maybe giving some nice big warm hugs to people we don't see as often. Maybe it's birthday parties, right? You weren't able to have a, a real big birthday party or you weren't able to go to birthday parties. I bet those are some things that you're really looking forward to. You know, we've been separated from a lot really, but there's one thing that the Bible tells us that we have never been separated from. In fact, you just heard about this in the book of Romans. Paul shares with us that God is always with us. In fact, he says it like this, who shall separate us from the love of God? Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not trouble or hardship or famine, not being able to eat or, or persecution or, or danger or war. Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God. He is with us and he always loves us. You know, the Bible shares with us that you and I have an enemy and that's the devil. And he, he's terrible and he wants us to feel lonely. He wants us to feel afraid and, and, and feel that God has left us. But the Bible also shares some really cool words with us about how we have beaten our enemy. In fact, in verse 37, it says, we are more than conquerors. Have you ever heard that term from the Bible before? We're more than conquerors. It's kind of like if you were playing a sport, maybe football or basketball. Let's use basketball as an example. And you were playing a game and, and you beat your opponent 147 to two, right? So you didn't just win, you were more than conquerors. 
And that's what the Bible tells us we are because of God's spirit in our lives over the devil. No, we are more than conquerors over the devil. We know that he cannot defeat us with God's spirit inside of us. We know that God has never left us, that he is always with us, and we will never be separate from his love. Friends, that's the message that I would like you to carry into the year 2021, that we are more than conquerors and God is always with us. Would you mind closing with me in, in a word of prayer and, and thank God for who he is and what he's done for our lives? Dear Jesus, thanks for loving me. Help me to remember and help me to know that you are with me, that you will help me to be more than conquer over the devil. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thanks again for joining us, and I hope you have a great new year. Bye-bye. So we finished fit to be a king on Christmas Eve looking at King Jesus. And as we roll into this last message of 2020, it's important to remember that he is king. So a few questions for you. Have you given up? Are you tired of waiting and wondering if God is going to show up. I mean, how many of us have asked, where are you, God? Where are you amidst this year called 2020? Don't you care what we are going through? Don't you care that we are restricted? Don't you care that we are sick and hurting? Don't you care that, that substance abuse and mental struggle, mental health issues are through the roof right now with everything going on? Don't you care, God, that people are, are dying? And don't you care that they're dying alone? Don't you care, God? So where are you? Friends, these last nine months have collectively been the hardest of our lives. But what we are experiencing, what we are going through, what we are dealing with is nothing new. Sickness and strife, famine and wars, politics and hatred, unrest and pandemics, nothing new. We're not even the first ones to cry out to God about it either. You pay close attention to our psalm today, Psalm 44, and what you see is the lament of Israel. They are complaining to God after some national calamity that they're dealing with. They're, they're mortified. They're confused. They're mortified and confused because God has permitted this to happen to them of all people, to them. Sound familiar? I think it does a little bit. When you read that psalm again, you see that the psalmist throughout it recounts the ups and downs. He recalls God's faithfulness, but then yet in the next verse he complains that God is now against his people. He complains that God is letting his people suffer, suffer defeat, despite their faithfulness to him. But in the end, in, in that very last verse, verse 26, they cry out to him once more to help. This is what it says. Rise up. Come to our help. Redeem us for the sake of your steadfast love. Oh, what words of hope they end on. They know he has helped them in the past. 
They know that he has been with them. And so they cry out once more, Help, Lord, buy us back. Even though we don't deserve it, save us. Save us, Lord. It's a cry of hope, friends, a cry of trust that God will deliver them again because he loves them. And these words is where our focus is drawn today amidst what has been happening to us. As we undergo affliction, as we cry out to God for help, often we're tempted to believe that God is no longer with us. We're tempted to believe that God doesn't care what we're going through. We're, we're tempted to believe that God doesn't want to bring healing to our loved ones. We're tempted to believe that God doesn't even want to bring an end to this worldwide pandemic. Tempted to believe that he has deserted us or he is unfairly punishing us. And Satan loves this. Satan wants us to put our focus on these types of thoughts. He wants us to turn against one another. He wants us to blame God and be pulled further away from him. He wants the church to give up meeting together. He wants you to look to yourself or to the leaders out there for answers to save the day. But friends, what is going on is not God's fault. This is our sin-filled world. He created a perfect world. This is our sin-filled world. That makes these things happen. The world leaders, they don't have the ultimate answers. They are guessing at best using what they know with limited knowledge. Yet God, God in his infinite wisdom, is allowing all this to take place for his good. He knows it all. He's not surprised by anything. So once again, it is good for us to be reminded that God is for us. Let's make that personal. It's good to be reminded that God is for you. He knows everything happening right now. He knows your pain. He knows your suffering. He knows the craziness of this world. God's not sleeping. He's not off on a long bathroom break somewhere. God is here, right now, with us. Emmanuel. Remember just a couple days ago, this Christmas celebration? What it was and it is, it's just that. That God has now come to be with us in Jesus. And in, and in Jesus, friends, God helps. In Jesus, friends, God loves. In Jesus, friends, God redeems. So today, let's remind ourselves, like the Israelites so long ago, that God is with and God is for us no matter what we are facing invite you into our, our second reading for this day from Romans chapter 8. We're going to begin with verse 31 here in a second. But what you're going to see as we work our way through this section of Scripture is an onslaught of rhetorical questions that bring so much hope and assurance for you and me. So as we work our way through this, please hear these questions and these answers personally. All right? Yes, it's, it's for all of us, but today I want you to hear it for you. Allow the Spirit to work in your heart 
to hear this section of God's word with freshness. For friend, this is what you need. This is what I need. After a year like we have endured. We begin in Romans 8 with verse 31. It says this. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? This rhetorical question right here demands a powerful, a defiant answer. No one. If God is for us, if God is for you, no one can be against you. Plain and simple. If God is for you, no one can be against you. Verse 32. He did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also with him graciously give us all things? So, see how this is progressing? God is for you. No one can be against you. And now you see what God did for you. He gave up his son, right? Born in a stable, laid in a manger, sacrificed on a, a wooden tree. The only one fit to be a king for you. God gave up his son, Jesus Christ, for you. For your sins. For your struggles. But wait, there's more to this passage. By God's grace, by his undeserved love, everything belonging to Jesus now also belongs to you. And to me, it belongs to us who believe. As God's children, through Jesus Christ, we are beneficiaries of everything that Christ possesses. Good stuff. Keep it coming. Verse 33 says this. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. So no one can be against you. God gave up his son for you, and, and now you're beneficiaries of all that the son had. And now we see that the case is closed. That's what it says there. The case is closed. God has declared you not guilty. How? From God, through Christ, to you. You've been declared not guilty of your sins. Why? Because God gave his son Jesus Christ for you and all the gifts that go with it and still nobody can be against you. Jump ahead another verse, verse 34. Well then who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. So again, this powerful question, this rhetorical question, who is to condemn you? No one. Why? From God through Christ to you. Jesus died. Jesus rose for you. He's your connection. You are no longer separated. The case has been closed. God has declared you not guilty. From God through Christ to you. Oh, and by the way, you possess all these things that Christ has too because you are connected to God and still no one can be against you because God is for you. Keep moving forward here. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine or nakedness or danger sword intense rhetorical questions yet again and the same answer is there for each to each of these you and i can give a resounding nothing no one nothing can separate us from the love of god our father through jesus christ 
Let that sink in. Just, just let it sink in. Because no matter what this past year has looked like, whether you felt ab abandoned by God, whether you, you felt the pain and sting of loss and, and, and wondered why God allowed that to happen, whether you, you can't shake an illness or you can't shake those thoughts in your head, no matter what, friend, nothing, nothing shall separate you from the love of Christ Jesus. Jesus' love for you is so strong, it never wavers. It never wavers. We have to allow the Spirit to work this truth into our hearts into our minds as we face each day, and sometimes as we face each hour or each minute of each day. This means, yes, surrendering it to Christ. This means, yes, surrounding yourself with brothers and sisters in the faith. Those who will pray for you, better yet, those who will pray there with you. Those who will encourage you. Those who will cry with you. Those who will take care of you. Friends, they're here. We are here. The church, the body of Christ is here for you. Right now and always. Just as Christ is here for you. And then you notice in verse 36... Paul brings us back to our psalm. It says this. As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. So, so why again? Why does Paul refer us back to the Old Testament? Once again, he wants us to see that, that you're not alone. I am not alone. Others have suffered. Others have gone through similar things that we are going through. Israel suffered. They suffered much hostility from other nations because of their relationship with the Lord. Friend, as God's people, they've always suffered. We are not the only ones to suffer. We're not the only ones who face turmoil. The suffering that you and I have faced this year was similar to what was faced by those who came before us. And guess what? It will continue to be faced by all people in this next year and in all the years to come. And then Paul ends with these last three verses. And these three verses, friends, show you where your hope remains. Verse 37 says this. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Five words for you. Through him who loved you. You are more and conquerors. Now think about the sufferings that you may have endured this past year. Do these things that we have in mind compare to the sufferings of him who loved us? I'm not trying to make light of anything that you nor I have endured because it's hard it's rough it's tough but, but look closely and see what Christ endured for you to free you from born poor in a stable behind the local inn faced persecution throughout his life because he was different from everyone else suffered immense amounts of pain for you and me he was spit upon and he was beat with fists. He was brought before Pilate, 
where the cry came up to crucify him. Again, he was beaten, and this time he was flogged. And struggling to carry his own wooden beam, Jesus was nailed to a tree at Golgotha. And there, the worst thing happened. He suffered the rejection of God. So that you and I never have to be rejected by our Father. Yes, Jesus suffered, but he did it all for you. He did this to free you. He did this because he loves you. He loves you so much that he died on the cross for your sins and mine. But even more than that, he rose. He rose for you, guaranteeing that you and all who believe will not suffer forever. After a year like this, you know that there is no certainty to the upcoming year either. The world will continue to be filled with uncertainty until Jesus comes back. However, yet tonight we see that there is one thing that we know is absolutely certain. God's love for you in Christ is absolutely fixed. It's certain. It's completed. And that's what you see in these last two verses of our text. For I am sure, for I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate you, my friends, from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. What a powerful verse. There's no better verse than to end our year on together than this. Nothing at all can separate you or me from the love of Christ Jesus. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all separate you, my friends, from the love of our Lord, our Savior, our King, Christ Jesus. Amen. And amen. And now may the peace that pass all understanding keep our hearts, our minds focused on the conqueror, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, I invite you to stand now and join me as we make confession of the Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. 
and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite you to join me now as we go to our Lord in a time of prayer. Eternal Lord God, in the fullness of time you sent forth your Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem us and give us the adoption as your sons and daughters. Hear us, Father, as we call to you in your name. Give us grace to rejoice in Christ's blessed incarnation and grant each of us a hopeful and glad new year. Heavenly Father, from whom all fatherhood on earth is named, bless the families of all your children with your promises. Give parents diligence and delight in their work and grant your favor on all children that they may grow in strength and wisdom. Bless all widows, orphans, and broken families also with your mercy, and give them joy in the redemption you have won for all of us in Christ Jesus. O worthy judge, from you proceeds the spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and fear of the Lord. Give wisdom to those who make, administer, and judge our laws, that they may serve faithfully in their task according to your good pleasure for the benefits of your people. Gracious Lord, receive our prayers for those who suffer, especially from loneliness. Comfort them with the sure and certain knowledge that they will never be forsaken by you. Give them family and friends within the household of faith with whom they can find loving companionship. Blessed Lord, help the sick and suffering especially those who desire our prayers this day. Gary and Sam, Melissa and Logan, EJ and Bob and John and Larry and Susan, Marilyn and Gail, Mike, Don, Diane, and Lord, those that we name in our hearts. Lord, surround each of them with your love in Jesus Christ, and according to your gracious will, heal them. Father, comfort all those who mourn this day, whether it be a fresh morning or a morning that has just come back up with another wave of grief. It still hurts. So we pray that you fill their hearts with the most certain hope of the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Father of lasting peace, show your mercy to those who receive the Lord's Supper this day, that they would behold their salvation in the very body and the very blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, given for them, and be well prepared to depart in peace according to your word. So into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord, who himself has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to prepare now for communion. Friends, with your communion kits, we'll get to that in just a second. But we need to remind ourselves, as we do every time we take communion, that we truly believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God and Savior of the world. Through him and him alone comes our salvation and the promise of eternal life. In Holy Communion, we believe that the body and blood of Christ are truly present in the bread and wine. And to those who receive him with a repentant and open heart, he gives the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Now our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, also took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Just do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you. At this time, I invite you to flip over to your wafer side and go ahead and, and pull that back there. And then when you're ready, take and eat. For that's the true body of Jesus Christ given into death for all your sins. And then the same thing on your wine. Then take and drink. That's the true blood of Jesus Christ shed upon Calvary's hill for the forgiveness of all your sins. And now that you've received this true body and this true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, may his strength preserve you steadfast in that one true faith until life everlasting. Depart in the Lord's love, his joy, and his never-ending peace, knowing all your sins have been forgiven. Amen. Friends, receive this benediction, this blessing from our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated. Just a few short announcements for you. We do have worship tomorrow at um, 9 a.m. Uh, we will also be live streaming that one. And again, we have drive up communion tomorrow from 10 o'clock to 1030. There's one more opportunity to worship um, with us here, both um, in the building and live stream December 31st, 5 o'clock, our New Year's Eve service of scripture and meditation. And then next Saturday and Sunday, excuse me, um, We'll be back to, to normal with our 6 o'clock um, Saturday evening service and then 8 o'clock and 10.30. Also, our education hour starts back up next week. That's it. Um, thank you so much uh, for worshiping with us here um, and those of you worshiping at home. Thank you to our servants up top. We graciously appreciate all of you. God's richest blessings as you move into this new year, trusting and knowing who has you and who goes with you. Your Lord, your Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you.